Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. On screen, you can see a little project I wanna talk about, but before we jump into that, I just wanted to let you guys know that I have published a new round of training classes to my website. You can go to mechanicaladvantage.com slash training to see those classes, and I'm running promotion through the end of the month that if you sign up for any of the training classes, the price is 25% off using the coupon code TRAIN25, and you'll also receive two free hours of one-on-one -on -one support. I'm also running a promotion for my one-on-one -on -one support and you can enter promo code SUPPORT25 for a 25% discount on all one-on-one -on -one support packages that I offer. In the past, you've seen me do some projects where I show how I model a part, add the tool pass to a part, and then show the machining process on the mill in my garage. I got a lot of good feedback about that when I did those, and I wanted to try to figure out a project I could do that on, and that's what I want to use the project that you see on screen to do. So what I'm gonna do with this project is all the parts that get machined, you're gonna see me draw each part on a Monday, add the cam tool pass on a Wednesday, and then go run those cam tool pass on the machine on Saturday. I plan to alternate between weeks of showing this process and then weeks of doing other uh, type videos that you're more used to seeing me do, whether it be CAD or CAM, fusion tutorial type things. I won't be hosting any of the CAD files on my website or anything like that. Instead, I'll be linking you to where these files live. This is a project that Autodesk came up with for their learning content. And I helped do a little bit on this project when they, when they were initially doing this project where I would take the parts and I toolpath them and I ran them on my machine just to make sure that these were very suitable for the education field and for people who are just starting out machining. So each week you can look for a link in the video description and where you can go to download the specific part and you can follow along and do the steps yourself. The majority of the parts that you see on screen need to be machined. There are a few purchase parts like hardware and some dowel pins, but for the most part, everything is a part that gets machined. And if I turn off some of these parts, you can kind of see what's on the inside. So you can see that there's a crankshaft, a connecting rod. If I turn off the cylinder, you'll see that there is a head and a piston and the whole thing kind of works. You can use your fingers to clamp onto the center part and kind of make the assembly do what it's supposed to do. The first part that I'm gonna work on is going to be the cylinder. So let me go ahead and isolate that so you can see what that part looks like. And this is the very first part that I'm going to show you how I would go about modeling this. Again, that's gonna be, uh, today is the, the modeling day. On Wednesday, come back and you can see how I'm gonna tool path this entire part. And then on Saturday, you can come back again and you can watch me run this part on the mill. For the machining part, I will link any vices I use or the tool libraries I use that'll have links to every tool and the website that I bought them from. So if you wanted to play along, you can certainly do all the steps, some of the steps, whatever you want to work on on this part. I'm gonna go and pull up the drawing for this particular cylinder. This is the print that you'll see me use to create the 3D model of the cylinder. You might see me make a couple of design changes. For instance, I know that this part is 1.875 in this direction, but if I divide that by two, that number is not 0.941. So I believe that dimension is off slightly, and I went with the exact halfway dimension. The other thing that I noted on this part is that the holes are called out as diameter 0.266, and they're just clearance holes for a 1032 fastener. And the clearance hole size is 0.201. We are gonna see some quarter 20 taps in this project coming up. And rather than adding another tool, I'm just gonna change those hole sizes to be a number seven drill or 0 0.201 in diameter. But for the most part, this is what I'm gonna use as my starting point for modeling the cylinder. I moved over to Fusion and I'm in a brand new document. And the first thing I'm gonna do is save this document. So I'll choose save and you can see I've created a project in some subfolders inside of this. And the subfolder I'm saving to is gonna be called Autodesk Model Engine Project. This part is the cylinder, so I'm gonna name this part cylinder, and then I can hit save. The first thing I'm gonna do as my design is I'm gonna make a new component, 
and I can do that from the create menu by choosing new component. I can do it by the assemble menu by choosing new component, or I can right click on my design name in the browser and choose new component. Each one of those gets me to the same place, so use whatever method you think works better for you. I'm again gonna name this component cylinder, and I can hit okay. A non-obvious step I'm gonna do is I want this cylinder to not be able to move around on the screen at all. I want it to be fixed in place. And what a lot of people I see do will right click on a design and choose the ground option. It's important to note the part only stays grounded in the file it was created in. So if I were to bring this into a different design, that ground doesn't follow into that new design. Instead, what I'm gonna do is from the assemble menu, I'm going to choose an as build joint and I'm just going to click on the component name in the browser and the component origin in the browser. And then I can hit OK and then you can see a rigid joint is created. So now whatever I draw in the cylinder component can't move. I can turn the joints icon off if I don't want to see that and I can hop in and start drawing. I'm going to start out by creating a sketch on the top plane and this is just going to be a center point rectangle that's the outer dimensions of the cylinder. So from the create menu I'm going to choose rectangle, center rectangle and I'll anchor to the origin and now I'll just kind of drag out. For the height this is going to be 1.875 and I'll hit the tab key to get to the other field. And in width, it's gonna be 2.375. And that's all I'm gonna do for my very first sketch. I'll finish my sketch, it goes back to a home view. And now I can use the extrude command or press pull. And I'm gonna extrude that up 0.781. And I'll hit okay. And there's my initial uh, feature. Typically when I do designs, I try to leave my fillets as late into the process as I can. But in this case, the fillets are gonna help me draw some other things. So I'm gonna do those fillets right now. From the modify menu, I'm gonna select the fillet command and I can select the four vertical edges. Now note, I can grab this one even though I can't really see it. If I can approximate where it was, I can select through the body and get it. And I'll grab the other two fillets as well. And then for the fillet radius, this is going to be 0.25 and I'll hit okay happy with that. Next thing I want to do is put the 1.45 diameter hole that goes to the center of the part and to do that I know a lot of people use the sketch a circle and extrude it and that's a perfectly valid method. I just find it easier to use the hole command. So I'm going to do mine using the hole and the first thing I have to do is if you let your mouse sit for a second it says select face plane or sketch point to locate the hole. I want to put it up on this face and typically people want to click where they want the hole to go. I'm going to click off center where I want the hole to go and now I'm going to see this blue dot. When I click and hold the blue dot you can see that center white dot appears and when I drag my hole to that white dot it'll snap onto it and letting me know that I'm at the center of that face. Under the extents I'm going to say I want this hole to go all the way through the part because that's my design intent. I'm going to do a simple hole and for the diameter it's going to be 1.45. Now I can hit OK. I like to make holes this way because it doesn't require me to create any sketches or do any dimensioning. I can do it all inside of the hole as I create it. The next thing I'm going to work on, you'll see that there's a couple dowel pins that are an eighth of an inch in diameter. And I'm going to create one of those. So I'll create a new sketch on the top face of the part. And from the create menu, I'm gonna choose a point. Again, this is the way that I like to create holes. I very rarely ever draw a circle and extrude it as a hole. I almost always use, use the hole command. A couple reasons for that. When I make drawings, all those hole and thread note data come across into the design as well as the drill point information. So if I'm not drilling all the way into a part, I can set my depths based on the hole that I'm creating. So now I'm gonna use my horizontal vertical. Note that when I pop this uh, point in there, I didn't put it exactly in the red line, I kind of drew it out of place. Now I'll use my horizontal constraint to get it in line. And then I can start my dimension command from the left edge to the point. I'll just kind of drag it up and make it look more organized. Now on the print, that dimension is listed as 0.188 and that's because the precision is round into three places. I'm willing to bet that that dimension is actually 3 16 which is 0.1875. Will that make a big difference in our drawing? No, but that's what I'm going to enter. 0.1875 for the dimension instead of the 1.188. If you did 0.188, that'll be just fine too. I'll finish my sketch and now I'm going to go grab the hole command again. This time, again, it's a select face, plane, or sketch point to locate the hole. I have a sketch point that I'm going to use and now I'm going to go through and answer the questions. I again want it to be a simple hole. The depth of this hole is going to be 0.1875 and the diameter of the hole is going to be 0.125.
and I'll hit OK. And you can see at first the hole looked a little, you know, a little wonky, but as you make a couple corrections to it, the hole turns out just fine. Now the reason I made the fillets first is because now I can use the hole command and locate them concentrically to each one of these fillets to place them in the right spot. So without doing a sketch, I'm just going to start the hole command and I'll choose this top face somewhere, and now I'll click on the blue dot and drag it onto that white dot. These holes are gonna go all the way through the part, so under my extents, I'm gonna choose all, and this is going to be a clearance hole for a fastener. So I'm gonna use the clearance hole option, and now I'll just come down here and tell it that I'd like an ANSI unified screw thread, and I'm gonna, the flat head machine screw is fine. Um, we're not actually gonna put a countersink in it, so it won't matter. On the size, I'm gonna tell Fusion that I wanna do a number 10, and it's gonna be a normal fit, and you'll see that it's a 0.201 diameter, which is what I want this to be, so I can go ahead and hit okay. Now I have that hole created. I need another hole down here, so rather than creating that hole again, from the Create menu, I'm going to choose the Mirror command. I have to look at what Fusion is trying to mirror, and right now it's trying to mirror bodies. Instead, I want to mirror features. And I can select that feature in the timeline, or I can go onto my model and select what I want to mirror. Now for my mirror plane, I'm just gonna select the plane that bisects. So you see that there's a plane that's right on the x-axis. That's why I drew this originally, the outside shape, centered on the origin, because I knew I was gonna have a plane here and a plane here that I could do all my mirroring about, saving me a step from having to create a plane to do that same thing. So I'll click on that face and I'll get a preview of that plane. It looks good to me, so I'll hit OK. And then now all I have to do is get those holes to the other side. So I'm going to right click directly after I've created that mirror command and repeat the mirror. And now in the browser, I'll just select the things I want, which is gonna be the original hole, the other original hole, in the mirror. I can select my mirror plane. Now it's gonna be the 190 degrees to it, to the first one that I selected, I should say. And when I click on that, I get a preview. I hit okay, and there are my next three holes. The next thing that I wanna work on are the 3 8 diameter holes and the two 1032 tapped holes that are on each face of the part front and back. So I'm gonna start the hole command one more time. I'm gonna click on this face. I'll just drag this to the center point. That's where, that, that's where the print shows me that it goes. For the distance, it's gonna go all the way through again. This time I'm gonna go back to the whole tap, whole tap type of simple. And then for the diameter, this is a 3 8 inch hole, so I'll just type in 0.375. I'll hit okay, and there's my hole. I'm gonna sketch in one last sketched hole. So I'm gonna create a sketch on this front face. I'm gonna go to my create menu and choose my point command one more time. Again, I'm gonna kind of drop a point in. Notice it's not exactly where I want it to be. I'll use the horizontal constraint between the center of the three ace hole and the point that I just put on my sketch. And now I can do one last dimension between this outside vertical edge and the point. And if you look on the print, that's listed as 0.688, which I believe would have been modeled at 0.6875, 13 sixteenths or 11 sixteenths, I can't remember which one of the two. And then I'm going to say finish the sketch and I'm gonna use the whole command again, choose that point. This time I want it to be a distance under the whole tap type, it's going to be a tapped hole. And now I just go through and tell Fusion how deep I want it to go. This hole depth is gonna be 0.25 inches. And then I will choose a number 10 for the nominal size and for the thread designation, 1032 and I can hit okay. Another reason I like to use the whole command this way is now when I'm programming the part, it's very easy for me to visually look at this hole and see, oh, look at that, that's a tapped hole. So I don't have to look at my print all the time to figure out what's tapped and what's not. All right, I gotta get the hole to the other side. So to do that, I can go to the crate menu and I'm gonna choose the mirror command again. For my object type, I'm gonna choose features and the feature that I wanna select is either in the model or in the timeline, whichever you find easier. I'll grab my mirror plane. I'm again gonna use that same plane to, that bisects my part to get it that way. And there are my two tapped holes on the front. So I've got my 3 ace through hole going through there and now I've got my two tapped holes. All I need are those same two tapped holes on the back side. And instead of modeling those all over again, I can either right click and choose repeat mirror or go back to the crate menu and choose mirror. I want my features. I wanna do the original hole and the mirrored hole across the mirrored plane. I'll go ahead and click on that face and I'll hit okay. And now you can see that I have some 
throat it holes on this part. The rest of uh, potential features on this might be some chamfers and things. I'm just gonna do a very small edge break and I'm gonna do that when I create the cam tool pass rather than modeling on them on this body. So this completes the CAD work on the first part in this model engine series. Come back on Wednesday and I will do all the tool pathing on this. And then on Saturday, I'll have a video up of this being machined out on the machine on the sile in the garage. Hope you guys like this one. There's gonna be a whole series of parts on this model engine as you saw earlier. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below or feel free to send me an email to kevin at mechanicaladvantage.com. And as always, thanks for watching.